What's going on guys? So today I am out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas. We got a really interesting video in store for you. You all remember that really cool weight distribution hitch from Waysafe that came in? Well, I got it with me and we're gonna test it. Got my good friend Nick here with me. How are we doing? He is in charge of service for this dealership and we are gonna put this Waysafe weight distribution hitch to the test, but we're gonna do it in a different way. So I already did a video where I kind of revealed this to you all and showed you what it was all about and went over this really, really cool Waysafe hitch. One of my favorite features about this is the fact that it has this adjustment kind of screw already built in place that allows you to load the actual weight distribution portion of this up without having to preset it before you put it on the truck like a lot of them do. And number two, the fact that the ball doesn't have to be bolted in. I already greased up the ball. You just drop it in, you throw a pin in place, and you're set. In a lot of cases, whenever you get some of the other hitches, you have to put the ball in, you have to have this huge socket to tighten it down, and it really needs to be tight. So this is such a cool setup. You got your two trunnion arms right here. Got all my hardware, instruction manual, and the brackets that will actually mount to the A-frame of the trailer. And I also purchased some 18,000 pound rated uh, chains right here. So these chains are because the hitch head assembly is relatively long. You may not have enough slack with the chains that come on your trailer. And if you don't, having an extra set of chains that you can lengthen them with is important. And again, I kind of went overkill and went with an 18,000 pound rated chain. So each chain is rated that much. Then you have your helper bar right here. And on top of the helper bar, you also have a tool to help you loosen or tighten that bolt. Very, very cool setup. Um, they've designed it well. I love the fact that they incorporate the weight safe scale in so you can actually see what your tongue weight is and what type of weight you're distributing after you have everything all dialed in. But we're gonna go ahead and get this installed on a trailer here at Ron Hoover. We'll be right back. Okay, so this is gonna be the truck that we are gonna be testing this Waysafe distribution hitch on. Why is this truck so important? Because this is Nick's personal vehicle. So you wanna tell us a little bit about your specific truck? What year is it? Uh, this is a 2018 Silverado uh, Z71, just a half ton. Okay, and do you mind if we take a look at the cargo capacity sticker on the door? You guys know I always talk about that. So the payload capacity on this specific truck is 1,622 pounds. So total payload capacity of this truck, and that's gonna be people, supplies, hitch, everything that you load up in this truck shouldn't exceed 1,622 pounds. Now, the trailer that we're gonna be using today is this brand new J-Feather Micro. This is a really, really cool kind of off-road inspired Jayco travel trailer. So this trailer has a GVWR of 4,995 pounds, basically 5,000 pounds. It has a cargo capacity of 835 pounds. But before then, there are some things you need to factor in before you start loading anything in here. And that is the weight of the battery, which we've added so we can use the trailer brakes on this unit and the weight of two propane cans. So once you add that to the front, you're talking about Eh, probably in the area of about 120 pounds worth of additional weight that will be resting on the back of your truck, roughly. So the first thing we need to do is take all of our measurements, and there are several measurements that you need to take. And we're gonna start by measuring the trailer front and back in its level position, and then we're also gonna measure the back of the truck and the front of the truck in a unloaded position. So those are the first things we need to knock out. So the first measurement we're gonna take is gonna be from the front fender right here to the ground. We are right at 38 and a half inches exactly. So, okay, let's move to the back. Then we're gonna measure from here to the ground. Man, your truck is shiny. So we are at 39 and a half inches. So 38 and a half inches up front and 39 and a half inches in the back. And I think you mentioned you have a leveling kit on your truck, right? So this truck's actually been leveled out. Typically the front would probably sit about an inch and a half lower than it currently does. So with a leveling kit on here, this is gonna be even more important because if there's any squat to the back after loading it up, you really wanna distribute the weight properly so everything sits level. So coming to the trailer, now we wanna measure from, I guess we could probably measure from the rock slider or let's measure from this edge to the ground. So we are right at 25 inches from the front of the trailer to the ground. 
So we're 27 inches, so we want to raise the trailer's front up slightly. So it's 26 inches in the back and 26 inches in the front. Okay. Yeah, about 26 and a quarter up front. Then in the back, we should probably be about the same. 26 and a quarter. So now we are perfectly level front to back with the trailer. So the next step is to get the weight distribution hitch, go ahead and put the shank into the receiver of his truck and align the truck with the trailer. So we have to determine if we're gonna use the shank in an upper rise position or a lowered position. And once we get it installed, he'll be able to back the truck up and we'll be able to see that. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and insert the shank into the receiver. And it's gonna have to go in a rise position. Okay, so if you wanna back your truck up, so I'd probably say within about two feet of the, uh, the coupler, we should be good. Right about there, you're good. Might have to pull up a hair, but I think we're pretty much perfect at this point. So next thing we need to do is go ahead and pin the shank in place, and then we'll move on to the next step of taking our measurements here. So Waysafe actually provided this really, really cool, I believe it's stainless steel pin that we're gonna go ahead and throw in here. Okay, pins in place. Okay, so the next step is that we have to adjust this on the shank to be a quarter inch, or sorry, an eighth inch higher than the coupler for every hundred pounds worth of tongue weight. So the first thing we want to do is get this on the shank and then measure the tongue weight of the RV using the built-in scale. So if it says 500 pounds, then we're going to want this to be, you know, roughly a half an inch higher than the coupler on the trailer. So that's going to give us kind of a determination of where all of our numbers need to be. So that'll be the next thing we do. Nick's making this look easy, but that thing actually weighs as much as a couple children. Okay. Then drop it down if you have room. Do we have room? We need to pull the truck up a hair. Right there. And it will slide down there. There we go. We're just gonna lower it to probably coupler height at this point, just so we can put the weight of the trailer on it. So it might actually have to be in the lowered position. Okay, so we have the hitch pin out. We're gonna flip this around. And guys, whenever you're doing an install like this, these are all things that you just have to prepare for that you might have to do little changes. It's so close either way, but this is ultimately the direction we're gonna need it in to where the shank is facing down or it's in a lowered position. So now when we put the hitch head assembly on, we should be able to get it just about perfect. That is actually Perfect, it's a half inch higher. That's pretty much where we wanted to be. So we'll be in the very top hole. Raise it up just a hair, down just a hair. There we go. And then kind of rock it a little bit so I can get the pin to go through. There we go. Okay, so with everything in place, we are exactly where we need to be. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna lift the trailer up from the front because there's no foot on this jack and we actually stroke out this extension and we can't get the ball underneath it. So they're gonna put a block underneath here and we'll have the room we need to be able to hitch up to it. Okay, well, that's actually perfect. That's exactly the amount of space we needed. So we're in a good position here. We're in a good position here. We're gonna back the truck up underneath it. Go ahead and lower the tongue down so we can see what our tongue weight is. And that will let us know specifically how high this needs to be. But considering we are, again, I'm guessing it's gonna be roughly about 500 pounds worth of tongue weight. And considering we are at the highest possible level here, if this is significantly heavier or lighter than we're thinking, then we'll have to make a, an adjustment here. But I don't think we're gonna be. So next step, let's go ahead and back the truck underneath it and measure what the tongue weight is. Perfect. Now we're just gonna start lowering the trailer onto it. Looks like we're actually closer to about 600 pounds worth of tongue weight. So honestly, we're set up perfectly. I think it looks like we're sitting, 
a bit lower in the back. So let's go ahead and remeasure and see where we're sitting now in the back in the front of the, the truck. Okay, so before we hitched up the trailer, we were 38 and a half inches in the front and 39 and a half in the back, right? So now we are 39 inches. We're a half inch higher in the front, which is the weight that was taken off of the front. And in the back, it was 39 before. Where are we at now? So we're at 37 and three quarters. So we dropped one and three quarter inches in the back of the truck with the tongue weight from the trailer applied. Now, let me give you a perspective here. Adam, could you do me a favor? Could you hop in the bed of this truck real quick? You don't have to tell me how much you weigh, but just to kind of show with the added weight of a person, let's see how that affected your, your height back here. So now we dropped another quarter of an inch. So we're 37 and a half inches now. So it dropped a quarter of an inch with Adam's weight in the back. And you know, if three more people hopped in this truck in different areas of the truck, you'll see the suspension sit lower in the front and the back because of course you're adding hundreds of pounds of additional weight. So I just wanted to kind of express that because you're adding weight to this truck which takes away from the cargo capacity. Anyways, we are actually set up properly for how we need to do this. Um, the, the hitch is the right height for the coupler. We know that we're at 600 pounds. We were roughly a half an inch over the top of the trailer coupler, which is where we want to be. So we can move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is to measure 27 to 32 inches back from the center of the ball to the sides of the A-frame. It actually says 32 inches. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have 32 inches of clearance. Okay, so we're gonna draw a line at 31 inches only because we wanna avoid the propane mount on the other side. And we're definitely within the 27 to 32 inch mark that they recommend. So at 31 inches, that'll put us right around there. And we'll do it on the other side as well. Right in the center of the coupler, right there in the 31 inch mark. Okay, so now we know where Adam needs to throw the brackets on. Adam, do you install a lot of weight distribution hitches? Uh, yes, we do. We do a bunch of them here at all different times. Alright. Yep, now the bolt is going to pass through from the outside and go to the inside. So that's the first thing you want to keep in mind. Okay, so the longer bolts are going to be for the A-frame and then these shorter bolts will be for the, the brackets that come through. Okay. And now what the instructions say is that you want to place the carriage bolts through the outside of the C-channel and you want to slip the bracket down on top of the A-frame, which he did. Then you put the second one on and then the adjustment here is you want it within nine inches to the top of the coupler. So nine inches from the top of the coupler to where the L-bracket, the surface of the L-bracket. So basically this part of the L-bracket. So. So the top of the coupler is right at about two and a half inches. So two and a half inches right here. So drop it down just a little bit more right there. If there are holes right there, there are. So you can lift it up just a hair. And this is where we want the brackets to sit. So once we tighten everything down, this is essentially how the brackets will rest. And the reason for this is these trunnion arms, when they come out, they need to rest as flat as possible on these L brackets because that's where you get your friction, weight distribution, and sway control. Your sway control is from it rubbing up against this bottom platform right here, and your weight distribution is from it pressing down on these L brackets. So you have two areas of sway control, one right here. Whenever you start putting pressure here, it's going to bind inside of here. So that's one area of friction on each side. And your second area of friction is going to be the rubbing right here. So regardless of the brand you have in weight distribution hitch, you do need to make sure that your brackets or your bars coming off, your trunnion bars, are resting flat on these L brackets. That is the single most important thing you need to remember when it comes to properly setting up a weight distribution hitch. Okay, so next is tightening these down to the correct torque specifications, which they're saying for all of these bolts, all four of them on each side, we're gonna tighten them down to 65 foot-pounds. Okay, so Adam has whipped out the good old torque wrench. He's gonna go ahead and get everything torqued down to 65. There we go. 
So, we have the brackets installed. We next need to put the trunnion arms into the hitch head down here. Okay, before you can put the actual trunnion arms in, you have to pull these two pins out. Pop these pins out right here. And then once we put the arms in, we're actually gonna slide the pin from the inside out. That way it's a little easier to get to the actual pin. Okay. So. Okay. I'm gonna slide a pin in right here. Can you pull this arm out just a hair? There we go. There's one pin. Got it. And here's a pin for you. So these bars need to be pulled straight out, like this, because there's a couple measurements we need to take. Looks like we have a salt spreader on the back now, huh? All right. So, bars are straight out, and we need to measure. I think we only really had to do it with one of them, but we went ahead and did them with both. We need to measure from the center of your rear hub, center line right here in the middle of that Chevy symbol, to the center of that bar. Okay, do 60, uh, 61 and a half. So the next one is gonna be from here to the center of that. I believe it's the center. Yep, it's gonna be right to this point right here. So the center, we are at 27 inches. So he's measuring 27. And then the next measurement is gonna be from the tow bar here to the back of the axle, or the center of the axle right here. Now, if you had multiple axles, you would go directly in between. So you'd go to the center of the equalizer, but because this is a single axle trailer, we're gonna go right to the center of the Jayco emblem here from the actual bar over there. So we are at 159.5. Okay, and I think that is the end of the measuring. So next, we are going to connect our spring arms. And I think after that, and we get the bars on, we are gonna use the application that they have to dial in all the numbers and measurements and get exactly where we need to be. Okay, so the next step is you have to download the Waysafe app from the App Store or the Play Store, depending on if you have Android or iOS. You're gonna open it up and you're gonna take the numbers as well as the actual weight of your trailer and input it into the system here. So gross trailer weight or estimated gross trailer weight as it, as it sits is 4,200 pounds. It's actually like 4,150 or 4,160, but we're factoring in the battery that we installed. The propane cans are empty currently. Tongue weight was 600 pounds. And you can kind of see how this app works here. Okay, so I've inputted my gross trailer weight and my tongue weight. The next thing I need to do is edit the vehicle. So I can name the vehicle, name the trailer. So the rear vehicle axle center line to tow ball is that first reading, and that's 61.5 inches. The tow ball to spring bar connection was 27 inches. And then the the tow ball to center line of axle trailer was 159 and a half. That's gonna be 0.5. And then we have this in the drop position, so I'm gonna shift that over to drop instead of rise. And then how many holes are visible? So I actually have five and a half. So I'm gonna raise this number here to 5.5. .5. So I got five and a half holes visible. And that's it. So now I'm gonna save it. Go back. Okay, it's in the drop, 5.5, 4,200 pound, 600 pound tongue weight. Now I can calculate. So right now it's saying that the safe target zone is 1,300 pounds, minimum 1,250, maximum 1,350. So whenever we get these spring bars onto those L brackets, we are gonna tighten that screw up top to where this is going to show 1300 pounds and that should give us the weight distribution we're looking for and we'll be able to measure the back and the front to kind of see what happens so let's go ahead and get these placed on top of those mounted in place and see what happens okay so we've moved the spring bars closer to the l brackets here and the way we need to do this in order to lift these over is if we raise the trailer tongue go ahead it's connected right now is it locked in place 
Yeah. This will get it really close. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, that should be enough. Now we can use this spring bar tool that they have here. Let me get on the outside here. And then you basically loop it underneath, get it in there. There we go. So we got both of those on. Now we have these pins that are just gonna drop in. And again, this is very similar to most weight distribution hitches in terms of this portion of it. It might be slightly different, but this part's relatively similar. So now we have everything in place and this is really what it's gonna look like when it's done too. So now what we wanna do is we wanna start lowering the trailer to get the weight off. Okay, so now that we have everything connected, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and get all the weight off of the tongue jack. You're gonna see the weight transfer over to the hitch here and you can actually see the weight transfer. Look, we have over a thousand pounds of weight that's currently being applied because of the trunnion arms that are in place. So this went up from 600 pounds to almost 1100 pounds, but the tool said we needed to be at 1300 pounds. So that's where we're gonna take that helper bar, wherever it is, I think it's over here on the ground, and we're gonna crank this up to where this gets to 1300 pounds. So there are two grease zerks on this side, one in the top and one in the bottom down here. This is stainless steel. So the only time I've heard of any concern with this, and I don't think anybody's actually broken it, is the fact that you do need to grease this. So if you don't grease this, if there's not grease in there, then this, there's a lot of friction in here and you just wanna be careful. So I would say that one of the first things you need to do is grease this and he's adding grease to it right now. I think that should be good. Okay, so we now have it all greased up and it's time to start tightening it down. So, a little over a thousand pounds. Let's get to 1300 pounds. They actually say a lot of people use a ratchet for this because it makes the process a little easier because we're moving really slow right now. That might ratchet right there. Yeah, you might want to use your ratchet if you think you can get enough leverage on it. There we go. Oh yeah, it makes things a little easier. We are at 1,200 pounds, just almost. Come on, man, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, one more, one more. There you go, 1,300 pounds. So we are now at 1,300 pounds, which is what they recommend using their application. You can see the spring arms are almost exactly parallel to the trailer here. Trailer still looks really nice and level. Let's go ahead and measure the uh, front and back of the truck. Now he does have, again, a small level on the front of his truck, so that might change things a little bit over stock, but I don't think that's gonna matter too much. So let's check out the front. Okay, so before we were at 38 and a half in the front, or we loaded up the trailer, it moved to 39. Now we're down to 38 and three quarters. So it dropped a quarter of an inch in the front. Let's see what it's doing to the back here. So it's raised the back up to 38 inches. So now we have the ability to adjust that even more by turning that screw on the top of it if we wanna transfer more weight to the truck or if we want to lift some weight off of the back. So we've gone down a quarter of an inch up front and we've gone up a quarter of an inch in the back on the truck. So if we wanted to, we could add a little bit more weight distribution and level it out a little bit more. You know what? I think we're probably in an okay position right now because the truck, yeah, the truck's not really squatting. It looks pretty level now. I think it's really down to the moment where we take it for a test drive and we see how all of this stuff works. Now keep in mind, our buddy here doesn't actually own a travel trailer and he's towed a boat before, or he tows boats, but not RVs really recreationally. So this will be a really good experience for him because it'll let him know how it feels towing with a weight distribution hitch that has friction style sway control on it. So let's get some cameras mounted. Let's hit the road. Okay, so we're checking the chain measurement and we don't have enough length. So good thing I brought some extra chains with me. Okay, we got everything connected. Got the pin in place, got the trailer breakaway in place, chains in place, hitch dialed in, got the GoPro recording from a really cool angle also. It's gonna be fun.